How are y'all doing? Thank you for coming. So nice to see all these beautiful, smiling, well-fed faces. I'm really glad you guys came. I'm Chris Casillas. I um, want to first of all, again, thank everyone for coming. Uh, we have a guest of honor here in the crowd. My grandfather, Nolbert Casillas, um, has joined us today. Thank you very much for coming, Tata. 93 years young. Yes, and so he used to deliver milk here to this uh, grocery store when this was Leo's Market. And uh, I used to help him deliver milk, and Raimundo would always say, hubba hubba, which means like, you know, get to work, like, you know, get busy. And so, um, you know, we've all been getting busy in our own ways, and part of how we've been getting busy is by turning this place into a community center. So you are sitting in Leo's Community Development Center. Yeah, baby! And this place really has always been a heart of the community. You know, people have come here and felt safe and got together. You see the bills that we still have there um, next to the photo. And part of the thing that we've always had going for us in our community, amongst other things, is the kind of community trust that we all have amongst each other. And uh, you can see that as like almost like a, a symbol of one of the things that makes us unique here, which is our ability to bond and work with each other. And so really, it's doing that and doubling down on the way that we work well together um, is at the foundation of what we're doing here with Leo's Community Development Center. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that people disagree about. You know, you read the news or you listen to the news and everyone's upset about everybody. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a downer. Uh, it turns out there's a lot more than, that we have in common than we might think. Uh, for example, uh, who here, to show of hands, uh, thinks it's a good idea to leave this world better than we found it for future generations. Anybody? Oh, you're right. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, who thinks that um, life needs like, clean air? Anyone? Clean air important? Yeah. Oh, yep. Wonderful. Clean water, clean food. Yes. Healthy food, place to live. You guys are on it. And it's these, these common aspects of our humanity that we can come together on. And um, that's what we're going to be doing here is uh, really starting to see how our small town of 3,000-ish people really is becoming a global inspiration for community living. You know, we can really be and already are taking leadership in this role, this role of being able to be a symbol for what we can be when we work together. You know, there's all kinds of problems going on in the world that we can focus on, or we can start to look instead of problems, look at potential. And they start to say, what's the potential of our place that we live in? What's the potential of our community? If we really worked hard and worked well together, what might we be able to accomplish? And so if we all agree that um, a better world for future generations is important, then maybe that's a place to start. Maybe that's where our focus can be. Um, the indigenous folks have a concept of thinking seven generations out, seven generation thinking. And if we start to, to ask the question, what can we do now that in seven generations from now, they're going to be thanking us for? That's the kind of things that I want to spend my time on. And it sounds like those are the things that you guys want to spend your time on too. And so there's all kinds of things that we might do to, say, become a more sustainable community, a more self-sufficient community, interdependent with the communities around us. And that's completely possible. We could do that. Can you imagine if uh, instead of having to um, use federal reserve notes to buy food, which is a fundamental human need, that we could just get food from maybe our backyards or community garden or a neighbor? Um, there's so many exciting ways that people are coming together in ways that are getting their needs met so they're thriving and they're doing that without having to consume more from multinational corporations or buy new stuff all the time. Um, our community really does have a history of being self-reliant and using the land around us as a way to get our needs met. And so some of this is going to be a remembering. Um, there's going to be some things that are just like a new spin on what folks have done not that long ago in the past, especially in our community. Um, so we're going to be getting some ideas um, from some folks from a little bit further away than um, the Globe or uh, the Backyard of Superior. We have some folks here from... Uh, Sweden, 
have some folks here from the Netherlands who um, heard about our town and wanted to come and share some of the ideas that they are having direct experience with around the world and maybe give us some ideas on what we might be able to do as a community to come together to be more self-sufficient, to be more sustainable, to work well um, with the environment around us, to really be good stewards of this beautiful land that we get to be a part of. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. And we can start to just imagine what's the potential of this place, what's our potential, and how might we work together to build a better world for future generations. One that um, people have the food that they need, that they have all the things that they need to take care of their basic needs in life in so, such a way that the person that's inside of, uh, of let's say, your granddaughter um, or your son or your daughter is able to come out and actualize and really express and that same thing can be for a community. We all have something inherent within us that we express all the time that when we start to put more energy towards and support is just magical. And so people have been asking like, what's Leo's community uh, center thing all about? And then I say, that's a good question. I really would like to know too. Um, and I say that because, you know, there's, I explained the, the, that concept of future generations and how we can support them. And we have a basic idea of how we might do that. Come together, learn how to work really well together, and then start to do some projects and act in a way that's going to be self-sufficient um, for all of us and support us in a really unique way. But like, how do we do that? Well, we're gonna work on that together. And one of the things that we're gonna do is hold space for people who have really great ideas to come and share those with us. And so that's what we have going on here. And so Focusito is an organization that has been putting together some really brilliant speakers to come share ideas, uh, work with communities, and what I'm excited about is that, you know, what we're seeing here with these folks coming in here to share this information with us, it's not just like a one-time thing and where they say, thank you very much, see you later. Um, this is really the beginning of uh, potentially an ongoing relationship where we can start to work together in such a way that um, we can be changing the world in a really positive and beautiful way. So, I am so happy you guys are all here. Uh, my heart is just open. I'm feeling a lot of warmth right now, a lot of gratitude. And um, with that, I will pass it over um, for more conversations. Come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you I'll also try to not uh, make too many um, noises running into the microphone. My name is Max. I'm here with the Ecologic Institute, and my colleague Brendan is here too. Uh, so we're, uh, we're behind Pocasito. Uh We brought these Europeans over. I'm European myself too. You can tell this maybe from my funny accent. I'm German. Um, and so I'm quite uh, used to being on both sides of the Atlantic. I'm not that used to being in Arizona. I've been here a couple of times, but we really learn a lot here. Uh, I find it super interesting, super exciting because even though this is, of course, the climate, the weather is very different from where any of us Europeans are from, um, there are commonalities because we too have mining towns that have gone through ups and downs and some downs and downs. And <laughs> especially in, in, in Germany where we had the fall of the wall and all of Eastern Germany went through a long period of transition. So we've seen similar things. And so we do actually have common ground where we can share experiences and talk about issues and about possible approaches. And I think deep down, we're really more the same than different. So when we look at what our needs are, Chris mentioned this, what, what do we want? What kind of society do we want to live in? This is very shared. Uh, there's common needs, there's common interests. It's having a place where community functions, where people can live together in a quality life, where people have good food, where they have good relations to their neighbors. And this is all what this is all about. Our Pocasito is about urban sustainability, which sounds very high level, but it is really about making better places for people to live in. And the focus of our activities here um, with our four speakers from Europe is about circular economy, circular society. So it means basically bringing things back together. Um, we talked about it earlier uh, when uh, we got the 
uh, tour of the town by Pete, and we heard about how it's so important to keep money in the flows of money in the community. So this is really what this is all about. I won't go into the details. I'll just introduce our speakers. Um, so right next to me, very patiently, I hope your arm is still holding up. I can also hold this, but you want it back later, right? So this, this is actually Asa Stenmark. It's her microphone I'm using. Uh, very kind, thank you. Asa is from Sweden, from, uh, from the Swedish Environmental Research Institute, IVL. So if you want to look them up, their name is IVL. And she's been working in the field of resources, recycling, material flows uh, for over 18 years. So she really knows a lot about sharing and reusing and repurposing and how to build these networks for, uh, where this can work or an ecosystem where this can work. She'll tell us more about this. Then we are sitting there also from Sweden, Matilda Jarvin. Uh, she works uh, for a company called GIAB, GIAB. Uh, Gottsen Lösen is the Swedish, so um, we can do the acronym, that's great. You work, the company itself is based on not throwing things away. So this is really the core of the business. So very often you have companies that have pledges, like we want to waste less or we want to uh, have less you know, resource use, we want to have less impact on the environment. But this company, that's the core of the business. So we'll hear more about that and also how this could maybe play a role here. Uh, always a very good question. And then we take a quick um, brainstorming break where we all get active. You see there's kind of, there's uh, not really notepads, but post-its and some pens on the tables. So whenever you have questions during the process, Write questions down so you don't forget it. Um, also comments, of course. And then we have moments throughout where we can then all engage. Um, and then, of course, we have our speakers from the Netherlands. So we have Dan Wedepoel sitting here. He's presenting his own company called Peerby, which is a platform for sharing. And this will be really interesting, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we have, last but not least, Martin Postma, who created the concept of Repair Cafe and started her first Repair Cafe in 2009. And it's been a huge success since then. It's all over the world and uh, maybe soon here. So we'll see more about that. So there's a lot of inspiration. None of this is, oh, you have to. This is just for starting a discussion. And uh, we're all here to then answer and discuss together with you. So we have multiple elements uh, for input and then conversation. There's more food over there. And there's going to be desserts. I can't really say exactly anymore what it was, but it was um, uh, from the mesquite tree, a flower in the dessert, if I'm not wrong. And that was very impressive to me. So there's a lot of desert food, desert edibles in there, and then also there might still be pizza coming. So don't stop eating just because we start talking. And, um, and of course, yeah, happy, happy to stay in touch, and Chris said it already, we don't want to just waltz in and out. We're going to be also around a little bit after the official end of the event for like people who want to stay behind and have a smaller group discussion. And then, of course, we'll stay in touch and hopefully we'll all come back. I mean, it's been so far, it's a lovely welcome, lovely, lovely time we had so far here. Very, very uh, warm uh, atmosphere, very good conversations, and um, I think just a brilliant time to have here on a Saturday. So I'll give you back your microphone, and I'll pull up your slides, and I hope this all works. So let's, <laughs> let's get this started. Awesome. Great, thank you. So it's so great to be here. I'm just going to put there so I don't have to hold it. All right. So my name is uh, Oasa Stiamark, and I know this first letter is a bit of a strange letter to you, but anyway, you can call me Asa. And uh, as Max say, I'm working for the 
Swedish Environmental Research Institute. So we are about 300 people, which doesn't, in US terms, doesn't sound so much, but remember that Sweden only have 10 million people in total. So we are the broadest environmental competence in, in Sweden. And uh, I'm working with waste and resources, material flows, resource efficiency, and those kinds of issues. And as I'm the researcher here today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the theory, theory behind all this, what circular economy really is, what do we mean when we talk about it uh, on, a, on a higher level. And then you will hear some, hear, some, hear some great examples from the other speakers to bring it more down on a practical level. But what we do when we do research is not like we have our white robes and glasses and do strange experiments. It's mostly we're talking to people, trying to find out how can we make this work in a better way? How can we keep our Earth the way that Chris put it in the beginning? How can we keep it over in a better state than we were getting it from our parents? And I'm very proud that we, I read in, in our vision has that we should go from linear processes to circular processes. All right, so I'm hoping that you follow what I'm saying. Sometimes I get a little bit too excited, uh, so maybe then I will use some words that you don't understand, but then just write it down and I can explain it to you later. So why do we want to do this? Well, it's because we are, at the moment, we are using the resources of the world, and now I'm talking about material resources, so metals, uh, materials, uh, all these kinds of resources. We are buying stuff at a very fast pace, and we are then throwing it away, like that. And of course, this is not very sustainable. And uh, we sort of have kept this economic system there's a great quote from some guy in the 50s saying like, okay, we need to make shopping new things the new religion, because that's how we can keep the economy going. And that's basically what we are stuck with at the moment. So we need to buy more things in order to keep the economy going. And we do need to change that in order to save the world. And uh, I don't know if Matilda is going to say this later, but then it will just be a good repetition for you. We don't want to change it too much, right? We don't want to go back to like Stone Age or whatever. We can still have our stuff. It's a little bit like going back to the 70s, basically. That kind of resource flow is a sustainable thing. And I'm sure that you all have, well, uh, grandparents. My grandmother, she was brought up during the, she was born during the First war World War, and then she was brought, she was sort of setting her own house, house up during the Second world, world War. So she was very cautious about things. She didn't throw away things. And we used to laugh at her because she was, you know, she even took those plastic bags that you can get from the grocery store, sort of washed them and used them again. But now I actually do the same thing because that's what we do when we take care of our resources. So it's more of common sense. and. I know this, this picture is a bit hard, but what I want to show is that these are the environmental impacts that we, can, that we get from all that we do. And this, these are four different cities that were part of a project, but that doesn't really matter because it will look the same wherever we look. So what we can do is that we can calculate how much damage we make to, or how much impact we have on the environment. And the blue line there is the food. The red staples, it's housing. And then we have electricity. We have transport and equipment, and then we have other services. But these light blue ones, that's the stuff that we have. So stuff is really important. I mean, Don will also show you another picture. This stuff is really a big environmental impact. And normally we talk about food and housing and, and other things more, perhaps transport a lot. We shouldn't fly and all those kinds of things. So in order to solve all this, yeah, there you go. Uh, there is this new term called circular economy. You and you, but before that, we might have called it resource efficiency, which is just as good. And this is all about making the resources flow in a circle. That's why it's called circular economy, of course. But recycling is one thing here, but we don't have infinite things to put into the circle. Right? We cannot make it grow and grow and grow, because even if we become super good at recycling. 
will always have losses in that part of the chain. So there's a lot of things to do on recycling. We should all continue recycle, but we need to solve it by making these smaller circles as well. And this is important because we don't want, if you look at this as a donut, right? We don't want this donut to grow and grow and grow because then we will still run out of resources eventually. We know that we already now are consuming too much of the earth resources, right? So we have materials that will run out of eventually, very soon, on the rare, rare earth metals and so on. So we need to keep it on the same, uh, same level, same size. And the way of doing that is to use the resources longer, so to prolong the life of, of things. By repair, for example, which you will hear Martin talk about, uh, and also Matilda actually, by just letting someone else use your stuff so that they don't have to buy, buy their own stuff, sharing that is, which Gal will talk about. Uh, but you can do, and you can do a lot of these things just on small scale, just by thinking, okay, I do have a drill at home, and I won't use it, but my neighbor might want it. So it's, it's not, it has to be super complicated, not that someone else has to tell you lots of complicated things like I'm doing at the moment, you can just do it. And another way of looking at it is this. So this is linear economy, right? It's what we are looking at at the moment. Take make waste, all end up in the waste bin, in landfills, not making so much use, but climate impact by, by methane gas. And this is uh, the economy system we are used to, as I said. Then we are slowly changing a little bit towards this. Some parts of the society are doing small parts of recycling, which is good. You know, we make the resources last a little bit longer. But as I said, we're not so good at recycling. But what's, what's interesting, this is the donut. But you can also see that the donut sort of turns into a fishing net, right? So circular economy is about building different links than we're used to, with different people and different businesses than we are used to from before. So this is why circular economy also needs a change in trust. And this is why I think it's a good opportunity for a community like this to start with this, because you obviously already have a lot of trust in the city, in, in the community, in yourself. So that way it's easier perhaps to, to start with this. All the old, in, in the old economy, if you call that the linear economy, all the uh, deals that we write with each other or the contracts that we write with each other, they are building on non-trust. So if, if I'm buying something from you, and we write a contract that you should deliver tomorrow, and then you don't deliver, I'm sure you would, but let's say that you don't, then I will, you will pay me extra money or something like that, or I won't have to pay or something. But in the case of circular economy, we need to skip these kinds of thinking and be more sort of, okay, you didn't deliver, but I got this service in another way perhaps, or uh, need to look differently at trust. So I think it's important to keep this net in mind and to maybe think a little bit about, okay, how can we build that net within our own society and, and our own community? And I'm normally speaking also to companies. So then of course, where, the, where does your company fit in here? And it all works somewhere, right? So you could also take that angle on this. That was what I was going to say. I hope it gave you a short idea of what circular economy could be, uh, might be, and I know you will have some super good examples uh, from our next speakers. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, yes. So we can uh, go right to our next speaker from Sweden. She has. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe closer. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We adjust yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> and uh, of course, yeah. Well, you can hear me. Okay. I just wanted to say yes. Any questions you have for Alsa? So she's not walking away. We're gonna do a quick break after our next presentation to have an open uh, conversation and take some questions, but also we have questions for you there. So get ready for that. 
Just a second. You can open this. Oh. Yeah. So, hi everyone. My name is Matilda. And, oh, my. Nice. so much stuff that we buy and we use it and then we just throw it away and sometimes we never use it but anyway it goes waste so that's what I'm doing I'm uh, let's see. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah and this is my contact details so afterwards we will send you all this presentation so you can contact me if you have questions and stuff and uh, I'm really happy to be here. I hope you will find this inspiring. And me, myself, I think it's very inspiring really to be here. I'm very happy. Um, so, when we do business, we always have this in mind. I forgot. <laughs> that there's no business on a dead planet. So we need to take care of the one we have, right? And the company I work for is called Via. And I don't think you've ever heard about it. <laughs> it's a quite small company still, but they're growing very fast. And the business idea is to implement circular. It's difficult. Oops. So implement circular business models. So we have a client, a customer, where we have identified a linear process. So here. And then we try to develop and implement a circular one instead of a linear one. And when we do this, we actually, we always had to, have to um, add value, right? And if we have an idea or concept we want to try out, we always look at the sustainability and profit. So that's what we're doing. We always combine these, because then we can scale up and do big things and have an impact. So we're not working with recycling, we're, we are working with reusing products that we all buy. So, and we have a vision actually to be a catalysator for developed circular economy in the whole wide world. So we are reusing, for example, a lot of these kind of products, smartphones, and so, when we started the business in 2012, we had an idea to um, take care of all the products from insurance company. And I won't talk about the Swedish insurance system here or the Scandinavia ones, but very easily explained, you can use your home insurance for everything you own, everything in your house, and you can just call your insurance company and say, I have a broken phone, and they will give you the money. Kind of like that. So it's very easy to use. We thought, okay, if you get money from your home insurance, where goes the product? Could you, before we came into the picture, you just had your broken phone or broken product and you got the money. So our business idea is to collect all those broken stuff. We repair them and then we can sell that product to another customer. So we take care of all the damaged uh, goods from insurance claims in Sweden. And there's a lot of stuff. Everything from smartphones to instruments to clothes and furniture and everything you can imagine. Uh, and when it comes to these, they have a very high negative impact on the environment when we produce these smartphones. And we have a lot of them and they get broken very easily. So we were thinking, why would we give money to someone to go and buy a new phone because when a new iPhone came to the market, the claims were peaking. Because then you can, you can, I could just drop this with my, you know, like that, and then I could get money to buy a new one. And that's just not resource efficient, right? So if you have a broken iPhone 7, and you use your insurance system to these, then you don't get cash. You get a repaired phone back. So we have a lot of technicians and repairmen repairing all kinds of stuff with a lot of electronics. A lot of electronics. So around 300 phones we send out 
every day from a small town in the south of Sweden. And we have been growing, uh, so, okay. so from being two employees, 2012, we are 95 today. Uh, and we have, this is the company, like how it's built. So we have all the uh, services for the insurance companies here. And then we have circular management of goods. Because we have a lot of damaged goods in the society. For example, all the logistics companies, food, transportation, stuff gets broken. Or some, sometimes just the packaging is broken. But the customer won't like, oh no, I won't take this delivered. You have to take that back. So all those kinds of stuff we take care of and repair and sell. And we also work with e-commerce because today in Sweden and I think all over the world, we like to shop on the internet, right? And when we do, it's free deliver and free returns. So I buy a lot of stuff and then I send it back. And this is a big challenge for the e-commerce because they have processes to, you know, sell stuff, not taking back. And it's very expensive to manage all these products. So what do you think will happen with this? Yeah, they go to waste. Not all of them, but a lot. Because it's very expensive to have this unpackaged and then you know, fold it and fix it again, and, and then sell it again. So a lot of things go to this waste. But we take care of all those stuff too. And we sell them, we don't even have to repair them. We just sell them. So actually, everything I have on, on me, that is waste. <laughs> because I bought it in our store. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, then we have a consultant team. Um, we have five consultants working with um, businesses and communities that want to be circular. They call us and say, oh, you have a circular business model. How can we do that? So for example, IKEA called us, <laughs> and uh, that was um, or it is a big challenge, but it's very fun, because it's a linear company. They want to sell as cheap furniture as possible, but they also want to be circular, and they want to be climate positive, because they know that resources really get expensive, right? Because when they get scarce, they get expensive. So we are trying to help them to and uh, have a circular business model, for example, renting out furniture, take them back, we will furnish them so we can rent it out another time. Um. <laughs> so. And yeah, this is just some facts that we we are in, in, in Stefansson, it's a very small village actually in the in south part of Sweden. We are also in Norway and we're trying to get to Denmark and Finland this year. Uh, we're 95 because we're growing very fast. Um, and we're a climate positive company. And how can we know that? Well, we measure all the benefits of reusing stuff. So we measure the waste we save and also the high, um, carbon dioxide savings. So as you can see here, we have the revenue last year and it's very correlated with our uh, positive impact on the environment. And that's also a thing with the circular economy. In the land year economy, profit is always correlated to a negative impact on the environment and the climate. Because it's based on like oil and coal and stuff like that. But in the circular one, we have uh, also a, a profit and a big re revenue, but it's correlated with a positive impact on the environment. So that's why, what Osa said before, we should not just stop consuming, we should not just stop producing stuff, we just have to do it in a different way, in a new way. So yeah, that's what we are doing. Uh, and of course, we need to have a store where we sell all this stuff. So we have a local store called in English, it's a Bhutan house, I would say. And so it's a, a store where we have all this stuff. And we also have three repairment shops in the store because we want to like, just lift uh, the question of reusing. So for example, you can come with your old shoes and get them 
outside room, so you can use it again, for example. And you have an electronics uh, repairing shop where you also can buy electronics that we have been repairing. So everything from computers to TVs to phones, everything. And we also have a repairment shop for bicycles. And when we sell all this stuff, we have this uh, uh, brand or like a sticker, we put on everything because we, uh, for the same thing, we want to list the, that we are reusing products, it's not new products. And we're working a lot with the UN's uh, development goals. Have you ever heard about these? Yeah, great. So uh, uh, goal 12, sustainable consumption and production is our business, but we are also working with uh, some, some goals, for example, climate change and, uh, and stuff like that. So that is the app, and that's what I'm doing every day. Uh, I'm also a board member of something called Cradlenet, and that is an organization in Sweden uh, and it's run, yeah. Um, so I'm a board member and the board runs this organization voluntarily. We want to uh, spread the knowledge and the word about the circular economy. We talk about the circular economy, often talk about cradle to cradle. And that's why, why the name is CradleNet. So our purpose uh, is uh, yeah, we are a platform for knowledge of and networking around the circular economy. And uh, our work aims to accelerate Sweden's transition. So we have seminars that you actually can come to, like this, to listen on different speakers. Uh, we have a, uh, a newsletter where we put out all this good information. We know that we need a lot of information about this. We also know that we need uh, relevant information. Because today we get so much information, we don't know what's true and what's not. So this is something our members know that they can re relate to this um, information. And why is this so important? To spread knowledge about sustainability, circular economy. Because a lot of people don't know, the knowledge is quite low. They did a survey in Sweden and they asked people, do you know what circular economy is? And do you know how many said yes? How many percentage? <laughs> no. Oh, just seven. Yes. So we have a lot to do. But now we are talking a lot, so maybe it's more than seven. <laughs> it was two years ago. Yeah, but uh, this is, um, I think this is a good number to show because it means that we all have to talk about these, uh, these uh, concepts and uh, we have to spread the numbers about it. Yeah. So that was all for me. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Like yes. Now? Yes. Now we can actually, or, or do you want to keep it in there? We can stand here together. Yeah, that's yeah. that's fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can also ask Alsa up here. Um, now, of course, we said it's your opportunity to ask questions, but you're also being asked a question and multiples actually. You've heard a little bit about what the concept of the circular economy is or what, what, what we think what it is. Yeah. And uh, also a little bit what Gear does in Sweden. A very cool idea. I think especially since online shopping is even more relevant here than in Sweden. Yeah. So uh, all these returns, all these uh, barely opened or barely touched products that go to the landfill um, but now we want to ask you, since we're here in Superior, so if you think about, well, we're here in a place that is a resource, what, what kind of resources do you have in Superior that you can work with to think more about reusing or um, repurposing, sharing resources? And resources, we mean anything. This can be a building like this one, the community center that used to be a store, a grocery store, or it can be also knowledge. 
It can be also physical things, objects, uh, like what you do with uh, products, or it can be something that is more uh, out there, like we, I mentioned the desserts, the <laughs> edible desert, uh, desert edibles. So, so this can be all be, this is just uh, to, to get you started, and you can maybe write down some of your ideas, and then we can ask you. And in the meantime, we can take questions here for anything that was totally unclear or didn't make sense. <laughs> and just to, to have an opportunity to maybe uh, shed more light on what's happening in Sweden. Because it sounds really, really impressive, uh, the, the way. Oh, we have a first question. share. Yes. Uh, do, do we have a second microphone for the recording? That's okay, I can speak very loud. Okay. I, I, I want to thank you so much, because this is, this is, this is really something that I think um, appreciating the environment and the earth and the beauty of it. And we've only been here about a year and a half. But this is serious business, <laughs> serious. It affects your family, it affects your marriage. Let me show you an example. <laughs> is it the news? This is my wedding ring. It's circular. <laughs> there's no ending, there's no beginning, it's circular. And you know what? I was raised an environment where you used it, reused it. You didn't have shoes to throw away. I learned to put on my shoes, appreciate my shoes, and put them against the wall. I didn't throw them across the room. And you had things repaired, okay? And um, where am I going with this? It, it just even affects your marriage today because if it's broken, you throw it away. And what you need to learn is to repair it, repair it, repair it. You don't throw the baby out with a wash. Right. That's so true. It affects every area of your life. Yeah. Every, your trees, your paper, your trash, your, the creek out there, when I look at the creek, you know what that is? It is an, it is a jewel. It is Superior's jewel, and it's hiding behind all the shrubs and all the trash. We're not letting people enjoy the beauty of it. And that hurts me, it hurts me. So, so the, creek, the creek is a resource and we should make it more accessible, put it in the center. Yes, and it is like, when you decorate a room, you don't need a lot. One good piece, one valuable good piece is all you need to focus on. You don't need a lot, but that creek is an asset. Great. It's hiding. What wonderful. And um, thank you so much. You're welcome. What, what's your name? Nellie. 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 Thank, thank you, Nellie. Been here about a year and a half. Okay, thank you, Nellie. So we have more and um, do, do you wanna just add something Oh yeah. No, no, just, just add very briefly that you mentioned the trash that you can see. So being circular also means that we don't litter, right? The, the system doesn't leak if you're circular. So thinking about, because it could be hard to grasp, I imagine, I've been working with this for a long time, so I could give tons of examples, but it could also be as practical as, okay, we can have a cleaning day in the city. It could be as easy as that, and then you can sort of start the circular journey. So it doesn't have to be very complicated, just because we are from far away and we're saying complicated stuff. So just remember that. That's, that's good. Yeah. So, so first steps don't have to be very no. complicated. Um, and of course, what are other ideas or questions here in the room? Yes, please. Uh, we, we have a company that does uh, our trash pickup and ostensibly some recycling. There are two or three bins around town. There are two or three bins around town that, we, that collect our recycling. Uh, but it's not curbside recycling. I, I, like once a week or so, I take all our recycling to those bins. But they don't accept everything. And, and so as a community, I think we need to, to either press that company or start our own recycling. Uh, process somehow. Great, great. So, what, what don't they take? Do they take uh, 
plastic or do they take paper or glass? Not, not glass. Not glass, yeah. Yeah, that's a challenge. And maybe you can say a little bit about recycling in Sweden, just uh, yeah. 30 seconds. <laughs> quick. Uh, so we, have, we don't have curbside collection either in our places, but different from you, we have source separation. So whenever I go, I, I also go to a special place, but I have it, like I will put glass in one bin and, and paper in another and so on. So that's, that's different from here. Uh, but also, we are also very lousy at doing this. Not all people are in Sweden. So, uh, many discussions are like, you're so good, but we're not actually. But, so that's the difference. And, and they do collect all sorts of packaging. And if we have bulky waste, we can go to a special place to leave that. And that will be like electronics, like fridges and stuff that will be recycled as well. So, in that sense, it's a little bit easier than here, I would imagine, to, to get it. But I think it's a good idea to put pressure on the businesses that should be responsible for it. Great. Great. And I think Sweden is uh, at least leading in Europe in terms of recycling, if you look at the total rate of yeah, recycling. Yeah, together with Germany. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, great. More? Oh, yes. 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 Of course, not like a lot of the recycling here that gets out from the bins does not get recycled. And you can call them public services, and they will not return your calls. So China can no longer buy these things. So it has to be driven at a community level. Yes. Now, one, uh, I believe it's in Wisconsin, or this is in Michigan, it's up there. They had this problem, so they knew that the trash was not being recycled, it was just being dumped in the mm -hmm. So they decided to collect all the paper boxes, papers, and cardboard. They found a factory and they repurposed it and they sell all those boxes to Amazon or you know, to the big companies. They repurposed the cardboard. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really great. It, it is, the, the, the recycling here is basically paramount to a hoax. It's not yeah. a hoax. Yeah, we've seen that, and, and we've just been to Phoenix, and there, and was it Scottsdale? I think it was Scottsdale, yeah. where the, the recycling center burned down overnight. So, so even that, so, so it's really, you're totally right, you have to do things locally. The more local it is, the more, the less you have, you rely on outside structure and outside contractors, and then also you keep the value in here, of course, upkeep. So where would you go to find information on what you can use for the, the, those types of reusable? I mean, I'm sure we got concepts in our head of, of some things that we haven't we completely overlooked, that there was a simple item that we could have used for what have you. I mean, is there any information that our mm -hmm. website would have? Yes, yeah, it's a good question. We'll think about it. And we also have, of course, two more presentations, and we'll, we'll have more uh, responses, hopefully. Um, yeah. do, do you have? No. Maybe, maybe we'll have no. more ideas later. Great, great. Oh, yes. Um, so I'm just curious about like the structure about the return house, where you have the different. So are they independent contractors? Are they hired tradesmen that you bring in? Like, how does that? <coughs> no, actually, we uh, well, we we have contracts with, for example, um, yeah, big e-commerce in Sweden. We don't have Amazon, for example. So, but you know, like that. Uh, and then we have um, uh, a deal with logistics companies. So they comes like maybe once a week with a truck uh, with all the returns. Uh, <coughs> some companies do that. Some companies actually, you know, when you buy something on the internet, you have this uh, return, uh, um, slip. yeah, return slip. That one says it should not go back to Amazon. It should go back to us instead. And so do then, people work for you. Work yeah, for yeah, the people work for us. Yes. Uh, so we are like independent from, from, from those, they are our clients. Uh, but we have started now with this, so that you as a customer, you don't know that you return it to us, but of course our clients like Amazon knows that. Um, 
and then we could actually manage the whole return process. Because um, then returns, it saves a lot of time. It, it takes so much time. So actually, we help them with you know saving time and time is money. And this, I want also to add that this business is still quite small, but we're growing. And we started with like two hands. We have no investment company. We just started. So I also want to like encourage you to to just you know start a business because I think that if someone here could call Amazon for example because they don't know what to do with it on the return. Good. <laughs> so we're working around this idea in Miami, Arizona, um, of creating a recycling center. You know, we looked at Wales has like six separate bins that everything gets separated into, so there's less like mixing of trashes. But then, like, if you can combine the recycle center with the maker space, where you have children learning creativity, how to reuse these things at that, that young level, by the time they become older, I think they'll figure out a lot of those applications for the trash that we use. And if it's done locally, they live locally, it, like, those effects can be seen locally. Instead of trying to find some um, one-size-fits-all solution, like, from somewhere else, I think. Like in Miami, we have um, some of the, the streets up the hill are all kind of lined with old fuel cells from the mines, the old uh, fuel tanks. And it kind of, it's like, it's reuse, it has a function, it adds mm -hmm. to the guardrail, and it kind of also, it reflects like the history of the town. You know, like kids growing up in the town, I think they can kind of come up with solutions out of our current trash mm -hmm. problems for the future. Yeah, I think it's a very good idea. And actually in Sweden we have those where you go to the municipality station with your trash or your for, for recycling, we also have like a space for reusing stuff. So, because I know that some stuff that I have that I don't want to have anymore, I know that someone else maybe wants to use that. So I put it for reuse instead of recycling. And then someone else may come and pick that up. Um, so we have one oh, yeah. Yeah. two more, yeah. Uh, thanks for being here. <clears throat> I'm Bert, baker, pizza, and some of the food. So one of the things that we're doing here, we just got a grant for from the USDA is the farmer's market, which I want to pitch, yeah. that every second Friday and every fourth Friday, we're having a farmer's market, whether you show up or not, we'd love to see you there. Uh, the other thing that branched off from that, that kind of goes into this circular economy is, you know, we don't, we, we got the grant to build a farmer's market, remodel the space, etc. <coughs> but we don't have anybody growing food to bring to the market. So there was a real obvious need for food at the market to sell to the clients that are coming to the farmer's market. So we looked around, there's grapefruits, there's oranges, there's figs, there's olives, there's pomegranates. So we did a little ad, ad hoc volunteer committee that anybody can be involved in. Right now it's me and Mary and Chris and it's we get permission from the landowner and we harvest the fruit or vegetables from the trees that have been growing for years <coughs> take it to the farmer's market. We either make juice out of it and sell juice uh, and make money back to, we call it community harvesters. So it comes back into the community gives us an opportunity once we sell some stuff to have a little bit of revenue and then we can pay people that need to make, you know, young people, whoever, that are willing to climb up a tree and get some fruit off of the tree and bring it to the market. You don't have to feed it at a booth to donate it. And, and some of that happened today. The drapes, the little post with the big jam was a gift from Marcella. I don't know if Marcella's here, but, uh, she has a fig tree and an apple tree. She made fig jam, she brought it, gave it to community harvesters. We repurposed it today for the little bruschetta toast. So anybody that wants to take immediate action on getting into a circular economy, join community harvesters. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Can we have one more question? Yes. yes. The guy that was sitting over there, over here, I think. Yeah. I, I think what he was asking was uh, much simpler than the answer was, oh, sure. which is just when this stuff comes to you and it's broken, mm -hmm. 
who do you have fix it? How do you, you know, do you get an outside person that knows how to fix bicycles? Oh, Call I understand. Once a week or oh, how sorry, to sorry. Uh, well, it's one of those 95 people. Uh, so we have okay. the local staff. Right? Yeah, staff that we have, and yeah, employees. So, and that's also. Uh, For the health insurance and everything, right? So we have health insurance. Yeah, and everything. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they get trained to fix phones or they get trained? Yes, yeah. okay. yes. But a lot of uh, the people that um, we have, um, the, the employees, they have actually was maybe for years didn't have a job. Because in Sweden, it's very difficult to find a job where you use your hands today. Uh, yeah, so actually we have, like I could tell you a lot of these sunshine stories where people just, you know, longing for a job, didn't have a job, come to our place, and now, you know, they are really the best. Yeah. Thank they you. can fix everything, so I, I'm so impressed. <laughs> So, so just a, just a reminder, um, we're, um, we have two more people presenting, but we'll take one, one last question, of course. Where do you have the space to take all the different yeah, we things have a lot of space. that you get back, yeah. and you're saying that in the 95 people, you have enough knowledge and skills between all of them to repair anything from clothes to stitching to, to bicycles to computers to all of this and the space? Yes. And you're net profitable? Yes. Bring it here. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you could start it. And, um, but you the, started small. You said yeah, two, we, yeah, we started like two people. Uh, the important thing is the most stuff that we repair is electronics. And for example, like uh, a lot of stuff is not broken. All the returns, they're not broken. The claims and you know all these from the logistics companies, it, it's broken. But uh, yeah, we have uh, uh, people that could fix clothes, shoes, all electronics, uh, furniture, and all those stuff. Yeah. So now I invite all of you to get up, just to get the blood flowing a little bit, and grab some dessert, and then just turn right around and come back to the table.